Today we're going to be talking about crystalline solids. Crystalline solids are solids in which the lattice points are the atoms, molecules, or ions that make up um, it lie in an orderly array. Unlike an amorphous solid um, in which the atoms are just in a random jungle. In order to classify crystalline solids, we use unit cells, which are the smallest um, segments of atoms that you can make to represent a crystalline solid by just repeating it over and over. Unit cells are determined by the type of layer, such as square array layer, seen here, or closed pack array, seen here. The way each successive layer is placed, such as like, is the layer shifted, or how is it positioned against the other ones, and the coordination number, the number of spheres touching the sphere of interest. OK, so now we'll examine different kinds of structures. Here, see, uh, seen here is a simple um, cubic structure, and um, it is comprised of successive square rays placed directly on top of each other. Um, the coordination for this, uh, the coordination number for this structure, is six, um, as seen here when you lift a few. Let's say this sphere here. You'll see the one on top of it, one beside it one over inside next to it, one over here that you can imagine, um, and the two on the sides. Um, two lengths are often used to describe um, this structure, which is the face diagonal, um, which would be here to here, if you can imagine a little line going there, and the body diagonal, which goes from one end of the structure to the other, and if you can imagine a line kind of going through the body. Um, this doesn't provide for a very um, packing efficient structure. Um, it, is, it has a very low packing efficiency of 52%. And um, we also have an AA pattern, meaning all of the layers are placed directly on top of each other. Now another kind of crystalline solid we will examine is a body-centered crystalline solid. The structure is very similar to the simple cubic structure, except that in each layer the square wave may be expanded slightly in all directions and successive layers shift in order to fit the spaces. This leads to a greater packing efficiency of 68% and a coordination number of 8, which you can see when you lift some of the atoms up. For example, this atom right here is touching these two atoms here and two atoms right here and then four more over here, so you get 8. So essentially you have an ABAB pattern because this row is the same as this and this row, and these two rows are similar, so you have A, B, A, B. Now we'll be looking at cubic close pack structures. Um, seen here is a CCP, and um, its packing efficiency is about 74%. That's because its coordination number is 12, as seen from this molecule right here in the center. It's got the six around it, three below it, and then if you can imagine, three right above it. The closed packed array is um, structured from successive layers of closed packed arrays. <laughs> and um, each success successive layer covers half the holes of the um, previous layer. Um, if you tilt this CCP at a 45 degree angle, you'll be able to derive a face-centered cubic. Um, and it's basically the same thing except at a 45 degree angle, which you'll see in the animation. Now we can examine the special kind of crystalline solid, the ionic solid. In ionic compounds, the anions, which are usually larger, become the lattice point spheres that provide the general framework. And the cations, the positive ions, are a lot smaller so they just fill in the little holes, or the dimples between the atoms. There are three kinds of holes that cations can fill. Q 
Cubic ionic silates generally occur in square array structures and tend to occur when the ratio of smaller ions radius to the larger ions radius is between 0.732 and 1. Octahedral ionic solids can occur in both square array, seen here, and closed packed array structures. The ratio for ionic radii tends to be between 0.414 and 0.732 for this solid. Tetrahedral ionic solids occur in closed packed array structures, and when the ion ratio is between 0.224 and 0.414. Besides ionic solids, there are three other types of crystalline solids that we will be examining. There are metallic solids, molecular solids, and network solids. An example of a metallic solid is nitinol, which you will be playing with in your lab. It is often called a smart material or memory metal. It undergoes a transition from highly ordered form austenite it takes at high temperatures to a more disordered form called martensite that it takes at lower temperatures where it can more easily bend. When it returns to its austenite form, nitinol reverts back to the original shape it retained in its memory. The next part of your lab deals with the 1, 2, 3 superconductor. A superconductor is a metal with zero electrical resistance when cooled below a certain temperature. This allows current to move through the superconductor freely without dissipating in the form of heat. This property causes it to generate a very strong magnetic field. Because of this, you'll get to see a magnet levitate. Best, Best of, of luck, luck on your lab. May the force be with you.